Okay, I've been asked to do a follow-on video for a previous video I did on glute strengthening. Now this is an advanced video, so it's taking those glute exercises to the next level. It's single leg, so it's not machine based, but it's glute max strengthening. So the glute max, it does external rotation and hip extension. They are the two things we're gonna focus on. And it's designed for those of you who are not in the gym or wanna do things at home using bands or your body weight. And especially for those sort of people who have had hip trouble or back pain where they've had weak glutes and they're trying to recover. They've done the previous exercises and now they need some advancement. What you're gonna need is some resistance stuff because all this needs strength and needs resistance. You're gonna need something like a booty band or a loop band. So this is a bit bigger than that one, those two things. And you're gonna need some sort of power band resistance for the last exercise. Now I'm gonna give you four things to do. The first three is focusing targeting on isolating your glute max into external rotation and hip extension. And then the fourth one is combining it all into our lunge type movement. So first things first, let's look at your clam. Now, you've done clams before, probably. What we do when we advance it is trying to isolate into hip extension. Now, the reason for that is, if I use this band, we'll, we'll use this band for a start. When you do a clam for external rotation, okay, remember, this sort of clam here, previous ones like this, okay, is doing external rotation. You're strengthening the external rotation movement. Now you're gonna get two things with that. Because you're in a bit of flexion and you're not fully in extension, you're gonna get a bit of glute max, which does hip extension. You're also gonna get your lateral rotators, your deep one, that's probably why you feel it quite deep in there. So if you're doing this sort of movement, you're gonna feel like it's very deep through your glute, okay? And that's lateral rotation you're working on. For the advancement of that clam, this is the new one for you. I want you to go into hip extension. Okay, so you're sort of like in a full, almost plank like that position. Now, from there, what you're gonna do is then elevate your knees and your heels. Now this gets quite tricky because you have to hold that position in extension, okay? Then what you do is, like with all clams, you push your heels together, okay? So I'm trying to try and push my heels together as I externally rotate. Okay, so the resistance is obviously going to give me the strengthening, right? But to try and keep myself in hip extension, I'm going to target my glute max more. Now, you're going to feel that in your glute max more than if you did it in flexion, where you're going to just work on hip external rotation, okay? And some people with lazy glutes, they can actually do this sort of movement and not even use their glute max because they're using their deep lateral rotators to do the movement or their TFL to do sort of an abduction movement. So make sure when you're advancing your clams, Go into hip extension, okay? Elevate your heels, push your heels together first. Every time you externally rotate, every time you lift your knee up, think about your bottom leg going down, your top leg going up, and every squeeze is heels together. Heels together, heels together. And that's gonna burn you out. You should get about 10 reps out of that and work on that. Now, if you find that this band is not enough, Okay, you can use a booty band. The only thing about a booty band like this, which you usually use for say hip thrusts, that sort of stuff, is, I'll show you. If you're, depending on the size of you, okay, you'll probably find at that point that it's loose. See that? So if you go all the way into together, okay, if you've got skinny legs like me, then it's gonna be loose. So it depends on what your body type is, and it depends on how thick or sort of how long this band is if you like. But you can most certainly use a booty band. Just make sure you're in that full extension. Keep your core on, okay, to try and keep that position. Heels together, and you can certainly work on a band like that, all right? Especially if the loop band is giving you too much fatigue, you might find you need a bit of a rest from the load there, and then the strengthening there. So there's your rest, and then your load, all right? Whereas the booty, um, this loop band won't give you any rest, won't take the pressure off at all. So that one is extremely important for your external rotation part. So remember, your glute max, external rotation when it's in a hip extension, okay? So that's gonna be a really good one for you to start with. Second thing I want you to work on is working on hip extension. Now, this is bias of people sort of for single leg, okay, it's not double leg, it's bias of people who are not in the gym. It's also bias of people maybe recovering from a bit of back pain because remember with all those back pain people we get a bit of a glute issue so we can try and work on a bit of core stabilization or spinal stability while you're doing this when you'll get more benefit out of this this is where your 
buoy band is going to come in handy. What you're going to do is hip extension. Now, remember, these are all advanced exercises, right? You need to be able to do all these exercises without the load first, okay, before you even think about putting the band on. So what I want you to do is get this band on here, okay? One of them is going to extend, the other one's going to stay neutral. Now, handy, if you have a mirror, so you can see what your form is, because what I can do here is have a look at my back and see where my back position is. What I don't want to be doing, in a nutshell, is when I extend my hip like this, I don't want to be dropping my back. All right? So you don't want to be doing hip extension and back extension, all right? because you're going to sacrifice the amount, the amount of growth here or amount of strengthening there, and you're also going to lose your course to be. We're going to, this sort of rehab purpose, we're trying to teach your brain a bit of movement patterning as well. Okay, the physio, we always try and nut out, okay, can you put in some movement patterning stuff while you're strengthening, then your function is going to be a little bit better. So make sure that you're keeping this very rigid through here, okay, keeping your anti-abdominals taut. So this position, I'm just going to edit that, that's right. This position here, okay, needs to be a neutral spine, right? From there, you've got to then lift one leg just gently. I want you to look in the mirror. You got to, as you go upwards, you're going to keep your foot in a dorsiflex position, right? And I want you to push your heel up to the ceiling, okay? And then back. Now you've got to think, okay, where's my neutral spine? Hold my core. And as you go higher, you're going to have to work harder on your core to the point where you can't go any further, and then back. Now, because you are keeping your knee bent, you're going to isolate your um, glute max a little bit more in hip extension than your hamstring. Of course, you use your hamstring to extend your hip, okay, of course. But if you did it like that, you're going to use your hamstring a little bit more. So try and keep your knee bent when you come up. Don't try and straighten it and use your quads doing this sort of stuff. It's got to stay bent, preferably at that sort of 90, 100 degrees, and working really hard on that. Now you're gonna find this quite hard because it's involving a bit of technicality, like, oh my God, I've gotta keep my neutral spine. That's the idea. When we're doing single leg work, we've got one glute that's not as good as the other glute, you've also gotta focus on a bit of core speed because the whole chain needs to improve down that side. So make sure you're not just sort of doing that with poor form, trying to isolate that. You're gonna get much better strengthening with that. And that gets your sort of open chain hip extension done well with some core speed. That's not too technical as far as standing goes, okay? So it allows you to work on that core speed. This is a fantastic exercise. So that's your number two. Number three, hip thrust. Now, we all know that hip thrusts are one of the best exercises for glute max. So we're gonna do that, but we're gonna do it single leg. Now, the good thing about this is, you know, you don't have to have weights. When you do it two-legged, you need weight, okay? So if you're doing a hip thrust off a bench or Say you're in a hip, you know, hip thrust machine, okay, with a bar, okay, or mach a machine with there, you'd be doing moving like that. Now you'll need load to get some more strength and advanced strengthening on this one. But if you do it single leg, you're gonna get the benefit of one over the other, which is if you've got one buttock not as good as the other, say you're left and right footed and one's not as good as the other, you don't need the weight with this because I trust me your body weight is going to be enough on one leg. So when you do that though, if you are wide with two legs, you need to then come right in feet together, okay? Make sure your shoulder blades, the bottom of your shoulder is just resting on there. Two feet together so as close to the middle as you can, okay? And then take one foot up, all right? So you're going to go into full flexion here and then drive through your heel into hip extension, all right? So it is still a hip thrust, okay, but it is one-legged. Make sure the weight goes through your heel. That is the absolute key with this. So when you are here, don't push through your toes. Drive your heel down to get your hip extension, and then coming down. Try and keep also your ribs sort of from flaring. Keep them down so it's full hip extension. The deeper you go, the more glute max, okay? And drive up. Now, when you get good at this, you can go faster. So quick on the way up, slow on the way down, all right? Quick on the way up, slow on the way down. Because the reason for that is, well, we go deeper. The glute max works sort of like on demand. The deeper you go into hip flexion, the more it's going to fire. The quicker you go, the more it's going to fire. So if you go quickly, it's going to assist the hamstring hip extension. Like I said, you're going to do hamstring work with this. So if you've got hamstring issues, you've got to be careful of that. But if your hamstring's okay, remember, your hamstring will work. But if you go quickly, 
your glute max is going to fire. If you go to deep, it's going to fire. All right. So with these ones, don't just sit sort of in this sort of range. You've really got to go all the way down. You just got to make sure when you drop down, if I go single leg, you don't go into back extension. See that? So I don't want you to sort of come from here and then just do a massive big back extension curve. Okay, you've got to keep in neutral at that point. So neutral all the way from top to bottom. And if you stay in neutral, you go, oh, now I can really feel it through here. All right? So one leg at a time, bang those out high as you can. Okay, awesome exercise. So now you've got three exercises that are going to really target that glue max in a single leg environment. All right? It's going to sort of advance what you're doing beforehand, plus you're going to have some functional core stuff in there to try and learn your spinal stability, which is great. Now, if you've done those three and you're good with that, what I suggest you do is combine it into a lunge type movement, which is a very functional sort of movement. So, what you'll need with that though, is this band like we talked about before. And this one is simply for resistance, because I'm gonna do, in a lunge, I want hip extension, okay? I need resistance for the strengthening, okay? So, if you put this band on your hips, now, what you might need to do is just Bring that up to nearly hip height, okay, just a little bit below because you're going to lunge down. That goes just sort of below the bony point of your pelvis where you're going to bend, all right? So think of if I went down into a lunge, okay, I need that band resisted at the point at the bottom of the movement. So I don't want to be back here and have it all loose. So go to the point, get the starting point right, okay, when I'm there, there's a bit of tension there. You're going to go from this point here, so hip flexion, right? Remember. The more hip flexion you're going to get, the better. So from that point there, if I'm leaning forward and drive up to there, I'm going to get my glute max. And then come down into a lunge. To help you with your balance, and especially those runners out there, what I suggest you do is you go opposite arm, opposite leg. So if my right leg is forward to start with, you think, okay, my left arm, my opposite arm's got to be there. Because when my left leg comes up, I can swing with that arm. Okay, which will help you keep your balance. Because you'll find when you first do this, you go up and you go, whoa, I'm all over the shop, all right? So good thing about this is it helps you with your hip stability, all right? But from this position, thinking straight up, slow down, okay? Again, we're gonna try and think deep, fast, okay? Up, and then you might have to put your foot down if you lose your balance, down again. Up, eventually, what will happen is you are really fine that you can control this movement. And this is all about getting those movement patterns going. So the good thing about this and with all our rehab is our glute strengthening is going to transfer and correlate into sport, into running, those sort of sports, okay? Because you're doing movement pattern training. And the big thing about that is if you can train the movement pattern better, you're going to get less injured. So try those four. See how that goes. See you next time.